my name is Rick Baravecki. I'm the Neighborhood Services Manager for the City of Tacoma Park. I'm responsible for code enforcement, parking enforcement, and all the city's environmental initiatives. We have a plastic bag ban. We have an anti-litter campaign. We have a polystyrene ban. We have an adopt-a-spot program, which is to uh, help with litter cleanup, which hopefully doesn't happen. And, um, you know, part of our, my job is to not only enforce uh, rules, regulations, and initiatives, but also to educate people. So I was, we're fortunate enough that we have a city resident who I consider to be an expert on anti-litter. And I met Lori um, over a year ago, right? Maybe two years ago. No, yeah. over a year, over a year. Over a year ago, um, she called me as, as, the way I meet a lot of people in the city is they call me to complain about something, <laughs> believe it or not. And uh, Lori called me up to complain that her aunt, her, she's a participant in our Adopt-a-Spot program. She's kind enough to volunteer for that. And part of the deal with the Adopt-a-Spot program is that you get a sign on your spot that you clean up. And she called me to inform me that, that some rude person had run her sign over with an automobile. So I came out and looked at it, and sure enough, the car had hit the sign. So I made arrangements to get the sign put up, and that's how we started the conversation about anti-litter. And I asked her, I said, um, you know, I've been tasked with educating the public about anti-litter. I don't consider myself to be anything close to being an expert. Do you know anybody who could give a presentation on anti-litter? And as I was kidding with her earlier, she highly recommended herself. <laughs> and that's how um, the trash talk came to be. And she was here in May, May yeah. and gave a uh, trash talk. And, uh, and it was well received. So I thought that uh, for the fall, we'd have her come back and, and give another one. And uh, so I'd like to introduce our, our local trash talk expert, uh, Lori Hill. Thanks. <laughs> so thanks everybody for coming out today to hear me talk about trash. Um, I realize it's not the sexiest topic around, but you know, it's an important topic. Um, so um, raise your hand if you live here in Tacoma Park. Okay, okay, great. And by the way, we have a Ward 2 representative, Cindy Dabala. Yay, thanks for coming. She's my rep, so. <laughs> so we have support from our city council here. Now, if you're not from Tacoma Park, just shout out where you're from. I know we have Olney in the house here. Silver Spring. Silver Spring? Silver Spring? Anywhere else? Anywhere else? Okay, sounds good. Did I just lose, did we just lose my mic? Okay, okay, great. Um, Okay, so well, thanks for making the trek, everybody. And um, after I'm done speaking, we're gonna do some Q&A. So hold on to your questions until the end. And then um, I'm gonna hand out some door prizes, and I assure you they are useful door prizes. I don't believe in giving out anything unless it is useful. Um, and if you haven't signed in yet, please be sure to check with John at the front, because after you leave here today, I'm gonna send you a one-time only email just one email, but that email will have lots of, lots of great information in it. Number one, you'll get a resource guide, which has information about what I'm talking about today, so links to websites and that kind of thing. You'll also get my ebook, The Sister Eden Citizen Action Plan, 31 Daily Tips to Take Care of Yourself and Take Care of the Planet. You'll also get um, some special offers from companies, um, and an invitation to subscribe to my email list. So just by coming today, you are not automatically on my email list. I want you to have the option to decide if you want to get my emails. So you can sign up for that. And then finally, you'll get a video of today's workshop. Right, Rick? You're going to send me the link for that. Okay, so you'll get a video for today's workshop. So if there are people in your life who you think would really appreciate this information, you can send them the link to that. Okay, and that's enough housekeeping, so let's talk trash. Um, so the goal here today, whoops, um, the goal here today, and I wanna back up, the goal here today is not to make you feel bad um, and inadequate for what you're doing, you know, make you feel like you're not doing enough. Um, it's in, to inspire you to say, oh, okay, that's not too difficult, I could do that. Um, so that being said, what the heck do I mean about living low waste and what is the difference between living low waste and zero waste? Now, um, zero waste is what B 
Bea Johnson does. She is the author of Zero Waste Home, and um, she and her family of four humans and one tiny dog, they create enough waste each year to fit in a jar. So I don't know if you can see this jar here. Okay, that's how much her family of four and one dog create in one year. Okay, I am no Bea Johnson. I bow down to Bea Johnson and I strive to l be like Bea Johnson, but I also realize that that could seem overwhelming to folks at first. Um, so that's why for today we're talking about living low waste. So let's do baby steps. And um, for today's purposes, living low waste means just being mindful of the waste you create and reusing over recycling. I know you're gonna think of what? She doesn't believe in recycling? Reuse before you recycle. And then just strive to send less stuff to the landfill. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about me. Um, before I moved here in 2011, I had always dreamed of living in Tacoma Park um, because, you know, I thought it was the land of greenies. You know, I thought that everybody who lived here shopped at the food co-op, um, did all their shopping with reusable bags, never used plastic, carried a reusable water bottle with them, and, you know, just lived the green life. Um, so, in 2010, before I moved here, um, I was a single gal, 44, living on my own, trying to find my future mate. So I made a list of what I wanted in a future mate. Um, and I said, yep, he's coming to me. I believe it. And so then I got on greensingles.com, okay, and it is a thing. People don't believe me. Greensingles.com, check it out. And I saw the profile of a cute widower who had two young sons. And you know what he wrote really spoke to me, and oh my gosh, his profile, I mean, it was like check, 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 check against my list of what I wanted in a mate. And you know what? He lived in Tacoma Park! <laughs> Jackpot! Yeah, I was really excited about that. So two and a half years later, I married that guy, and that is John, who is out front. So, um, and this is our family photo from last holiday season. Um, now, the, the short blonde has grown about three inches and has cut his hair, so there's, there's Brian. Um, and we also have our rescue dog, Odin, and rescue cats, Loki and Thor, who are brothers. So, um, yeah, it's me among six males at my house, so that's what I'm dealing with. So when I moved here, you know, I'd walk the dog and I'd see trash everywhere I went. And so I just started, you know, picking it up. But it got to be, there was so much trash, I couldn't carry it all in my hands. And so I decided to carry a Chico bag with me whenever I picked up trash. Because here's the thing, I did not want to carry a plastic bag because I didn't want to put another piece of plastic in the waste stream. So I just walk around with this, pick up my trash, and then empty this in you know, my kitchen trash at home. Um, and then I heard about the city's Adopt-a-Spot program, and you know my reasoning was, well, you know, I pick up trash anyway, I might as well get some credit for it. And as Rick said, you get a nifty sign. Um, so there's my nifty sign. You know, anything for exposure, anything to sell <laughs> Sister Eden. Um, but here's the thing: by picking up trash um, on a regular basis, I really learned a lot about my fellow humans. Um, and here's the thing, the trash I see isn't litter that people just throw out their window. It's stuff that blows out of our trash cans and recycle bins or public trash cans and recycle bins. And I see a lot of plastic bags that are empty and full. I see a lot of plastic water bottles and soda bottles and plastic lids and plastic cups and plastic straws, and plastic wrappers from crap snacks, and um, cigarettes. Um, I don't see apple cores or reusable water bottles or reusable bags, okay? Um, so one thing this tells me is that we are on the go so much 
that we feel the need to use these time-saving options, um, like to-go containers and crap snacks, to get through the day. And it's at the detriment of the well-being of our planet. And it's also at the detriment of the well-being of us, you know, our health from eating these crap snacks and sodas, and our sanity because we're like, go, 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 go. Um, and it tells me that we all need to slow the huh down, okay? And I'm, I'm just as guilty. And this is definitely something I work on all the time. And it's, I'm getting better, but I'm not perfect at it. Um, so anyway, when I'm picking up trash, it's, it's kind of like cleaning my house. You know, and in fact, I am cleaning my house because the earth is our collective home, okay? And, um, but unfortunately, <laughs> we're letting lots of waste fall on our collective living room floor. And that waste ends up in our green spaces. And, and then it gets into our waterways, and then it gets into our aquatic life, which some of us eat. And, okay, you know, just think about it. You wouldn't throw a piece of trash on your living room floor, right? And just leave it there. Okay, the boys in that picture, my sons, yeah, they would throw trash on the living room floor, but that's another, that's another issue. Okay, but again, you wouldn't throw trash on your living room floor and just leave it there. Um, and if somebody else threw trash on your living room floor, you'd probably pick it up and, you know, and clean up after them. So why is our collective living room floor, Earth, any different? Um, as citizens of this planet, you know, we all need to take care of our living room. We all need to clean up after ourselves and um, create less waste so that nothing falls on our collective living room floor. And it also means that sometimes we need to pick up the trash of others. Um, who had no idea that their trash fell on the living room floor. Sometimes people just aren't aware that their waste fell there. Um, because one day maybe your trash falls on the living room floor and you are unaware of it. So maybe hopefully somebody will pay it forward and pick up after you. Um, so back to picking up trash. One day when I was picking up trash, I thought, you know, how do I motivate my neighbors to pick up trash? And, you know, it's a great workout. And, uh, you know, it really does give me a great feeling of satisfaction when I do clean up. But I realized that picking up trash is not for everybody. And, um, and then it hit me, getting people to pick up trash is not the problem. What, I, what we all need to do is just stop creating it in the first place. And um, because once we throw something away, where's away? Okay, do we really know what happens to it? And you know, where is a way anyway? I mean, I think that a lot of people um, think that, whoop, shoot, okay. I'm trying to find, where is my, okay. A lot of people think a way is in the black part. No, that's not where a way is. Um, it, it stays on Earth, and it never goes away. Um, you know, does it end up here in a landfill? Or, you know, how about here? Or, you know, how about here? Or here? You know, we can't be sure. And, you know, by the way, scientists say that by 2050, it's, it's predicted that there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. So what do we do? Okay, well, we've all seen reduce, reuse, recycle. But I think, unfortunately, we're all just focusing on recycle. And um, what we really need to be focusing on is reducing and reusing. And let me give you an example of reducing and reusing. So John and I both love sparkling water, okay? And we used to buy plastic bottles of sparkling water from the food co-op. And then, you know, we're like, oh, we don't want to do plastic, let's switch to glass. And, you know, but we were still buying the same amount of sparkling water. And so we decided, and then we, we noticed how many bottles of sparkling water were ending up in our recycling bin. 
And years ago, it would be like, wow, look at all the recycling we do. Look at all those bottles. And then we're like, wow, that is creating a lot of waste for just drinking this one time and then disposing of it. That just doesn't make a lot of sense. So we wanted to do something about it. So one time for Christmas, Santa brought us a um, soda stream machine. And a lot of people think this is just meant for soda. We, we use it just for carbonated beverages. We just use it for water. And I, I drink a lot of water, but it's mostly all sparkling water. So it actually helped us reduce and in fact actually eliminate um, the amount of recycling that we created. We basically have no waste. First of all, they give you bottles. Now, yes, they are plastic bottles that we one day recycle, but we use them over and over again. And then we take the CO2 cartridge and we return that to Ace Hardware right here in town. And, um, and then the only other waste is the little hermetically sealed blue blue thing and then um, which goes in trash and then there's a little white cap which depending on your jurisdiction you can put that in your recycling or you should throw it in trash. So really there's no waste there, minimal waste. And we get about 120 bottles out of our cartridge which adds up to 25 cents a liter. So we have no trash, minimal trash, tiny amount of trash and it's less expensive so that's what I'm saying about reducing over reusing. Um, so paper is another example. Um, I try to be as paperless as possible, but you know, I come from a time when we used paper to write notes and things, okay? And <laughs> I still have a paper day timer, but it's made of recycled paper. So if I get a full piece of paper in the mail that has a blank side, I will reuse that. I will put that in the printer and print on that. Okay, other, I have my kindred spirit. Okay, great, other people do that, yay. Okay, and then if there's only like a half a piece of paper with a blank space, I use that for scrap paper, okay? So reuse, reuse, reuse as much as you can, and then when you can't reuse anymore, recycle. Okay, but let's return to the three R's, okay? And um, let's add two other words, refuse and rot, okay? And I get this from B Bia Johnson, zero waste, rock star, Bia Johnson. Okay, so refusing is one thing Americans have a really tough time with. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the show Hoarders, okay? Um, and by that, um, we really need to reuse first. Um, and, um, but, bef sorry, we need to refuse and there are many things that we can refuse that you may not have thought about, but hopefully after today, you will become aware of the things that you can begin to refuse, like the plastic straw and the plastic bag and the plastic water bottle and the plastic cup and the plastic plate and the plastic cutlery and the 15 packets of soy sauce and duck sauce that you get with your takeout and the ketchup packets and the stack of napkins and the swag bag and the bag full of tchotchkes that we collect when we go to trade shows and conferences and things like that. Just say, no thank you, I don't need that. Or I have my own bag, I don't need yours. Thanks so much. Um, so ask yourself, how can I begin refusing? Um, and then rot means what? Composting, yes. So here in Tacoma Park, we are so darn lucky that we have a curbside compost program, okay? Um, and it's so much better to put your food waste in compost than letting it go straight to the landfill because what happens? Greenhouse gases. And um, yeah, I think we know there's a thing called global climate change going on and we need to do something about it. And one of the easy ways we can fight global climate change is to compost our food waste. Um, and it's really, really easy. Um, so when we renovated our house in 2011, we renovated it so that we built in our own compost bin. Um, so where most people would have a trash can that goes, like that you pull out, that is our compost bin, okay? And that is where all of our compost waste goes. And then um, Thursday night, before our compost goes out on Friday, I just collect up that bag, 
okay, and that is a compostable liner, and then I just put that in the bucket that the city provides us, and I put that curbside, okay? It's the easiest thing in the world. Um, John and I used to try to, before the compost program, John and I tried to um, compost in our backyard. Well, number one, you can't put meat and cheese and, and things like that in your backyard compost. Um, and also, you know, we did a lot of entertaining and we would have compostable, disposable cups and things like that. Those aren't gonna break down in your backyard compost. And also, we were really bad. You know, you're supposed to like move it around and you know, throw in leaves and all types. There's a science to it and all that. I'm like, over my head, don't keep forgetting. It just didn't work. So this curbside compost program is great. Now, if you do not live in Tacoma Park, have no fear, there are programs around that do, you can pay to have compost picked up curbside. And we actually used to do that. We actually used to pay for that. So cancel the cable and subscribe to a compost program that will, yeah, come in. But let me tell you um, what can go in the compost bin. Um, the great thing about a curbside compost program is that you can put meat and fish and eggs and that type of thing in, but there are some other things that you can fit in that you may not um, think about. Okay, so um, you know, all types of grains, chopsticks, but you don't need chopsticks, right? You use reusable chopsticks. Yes, okay. Um, popsicle sticks, coffee grounds, filters, um, tea bags, just make sure you take out the, if there's a little staple, take that out, okay? Dairy products, so cheese and butter and ice cream. Of course, fruits and vegetables, whether they're cooked. Um, meats, fish, shellfish, even the bones, okay? Um, nuts and beans. Paper products, so paper towels can go in there. Napkins, paper plates. Um, just as lo long as they don't have a, um, you know, like a, a plastic lining to them um, or a wax lining. Pizza boxes you can put in compost if the, I, what I do with my pizza boxes is the soiled part, I tear off, I put that in compost, and then the unsoiled part I put in recycling, okay? Um, soap nuts, which I will get to in a bit, and then the BPI certified plates and takeout containers. So look on the back and you will see a little signature sign logo if it's BPI certified. And um, the folks who, Nima, who runs our curbside compost program, our food waste collection program, she, she has said yes, it needs to have that certification before they will take it, okay? So it's basically all your food and then some, okay? So it makes a lot of sense. But the one thing that the city pointed out to me is I used to put in my dryer lint and then, yeah, that's a bad move because if you have plastic clothes that are made of polyester, you've got plastic in your dryer lint and then you're putting plastic in the food stream. So we don't want to do that. We just can't get, a get rid of plastic, can we? Okay, so, um, and those compostable plates, cups, and cutlery, um, they, you can buy those at the food co-op and at Whole Foods, even, you can even get it at Party City, okay? Party City, depending on your Party City, there is like a small section of green stuff, and so you can get compostable products there. So, talking about um, – hold on for a second. I just kind of lost my way here for a second. Okay. Um, Speaking of Tacoma Park's programs, Rick told you about the plastic bag ban, okay? And so um, I was really ecstatic when I heard that the city wanted to ban plastic bags. Um, but of course they had a few exceptions. And so what I did was I actually got up during a city council meeting and I was one of those people who said, okay, I think it's great, but we can do better. And I gave examples of how we can avoid plastic bags in everything that we do. And, um, you know, even Kate Stewart was like crying in her head to like look at the little examples of things that I had. And, um, but unfortunately, I mean, fortunately the ban passed, but unfortunately all the exceptions that I was against 
also passed. Um, so I decided to make a video about how to avoid plastic bags. And um, it has um, 12,373 hits on YouTube as of last night. Um, so I thought I'd share it with you. And it um, was shot here in Tacoma Park. So you might see people and places that you recognize. And I hope this goes. I'm declaring war on plastic bags. We bring our own reusable bags to the grocery store, but plastic bags still kept coming into our home. Because of the health and environmental impact of plastic on our lives, I decided I wanted our family to go plastic free. It's really easy to do and it creates a lot less clutter in your home. So here are my six tips for avoiding plastic bags. When I'm shopping for produce, whether at the grocery store or at the farmer's market, I keep it loose, baby. For smaller items, I like to use mesh bags like this, which you can either buy online or at the grocery store. They can also double as a salad spinner. Just wash your greens, then place them in the bag, and then take it outside and spit away. For items like carrots, I opt for the loose option because it's one less bag. And then I take the greens and use them in stir fry. Whenever I can, I get our bread directly from our local bakery or at a grocery store that has a bakery. I ask them to slice a fresh loaf and then place the loaf in my reusable cotton bag. Our local Whole Foods makes this really easy. You pick your loaf at the self-serve bakery, have them slice it, and then use their label maker to label your bag. I then put our bread bag directly in the freezer with the label. I buy bagels in bulk at our co-op and put those in a reusable cotton bag too. When I get them home, I pre-slice them, put a small piece of wax paper between them, which I reuse, and then freeze them in the cloth bag. When we go to use them, the wax paper makes it easy to separate the two frozen slices. We buy in bulk to save money, and we bring our own containers to reduce the amount of plastic cluttering our kitchen. Depending on the item, I either use a glass or a cloth container. And I didn't buy anything new. Some of the containers I use are old mason jars, pickle jars, spaghetti sauce jars, and others I bought on the cheap at our local thrift store. But before I put anything in them for the first time, I have the container weighed. I write the weight, known as the tear, on the outside of the container so the weight of the container can be deducted from the overall weight of the item. I wash these fabric bags that contain my soap nuts and use them to hold flour and sugar and other dry goods. You know, once I got the hang of this, it was so easy. And you know, let me tell you, it feels great to create less waste in the kitchen. It's my new obsession. If your grocery store doesn't offer items in bulk, just ask them to. We now avoid dry cleaning bags by using the Green Garmento. It's an investment of just $9.99 and so worth it to avoid all that plastic. The bag is made of recyclable, non-woven polypropylene, which serves three purposes a hamper for your dirty clothes, a duffel for transporting laundry and old hangers to the dry cleaner, and the hanging garment bag. Just request that your dry cleaning come back naked so that your clean clothes come back inside the hanging garment bag. When I order takeout, there are two ways I bring my own bag. When I order in person, I tell them, I've got my own bag, and I hand it directly to them. When I order over the phone, I tell them, I'm bringing my own bag. And then I make a point to get to the restaurant a little early so that when my order is up, they can put my order directly in my own bag. I find that nylon bags like Chico bags are great to use because if some food spills, they're really easy to clean in warm sudsy water and then you can just line dry them. By the way, when ordering, I also tell the restaurant, I do not need 50 packets of ketchup plastic cutlery, or napkins. Now, if I'm eating on the go, I use my own reusable bamboo cutlery from To Go Wear. So what about all the other places we like to shop? 
like the drug store, the office supply store, the hardware store, the gift shop, or the clothing store. Why not use reusable bags there too? So to be sure that little broccoli florets don't co-mingle with my fair trade organic t-shirts, I designate specific bags for clothing shopping only. In the comment section below, let us know how these tips work for you. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching and remember, take care of yourself and take care of the planet. So um, I'm going to include a link to that video in the resource guide that you get, so please share it with others. So does that seem doable? Yes? Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're holding questions. Can we hold questions to the end? Okay, great. Thanks so much. Um, so I want to thank my friend, Brooke Moore. She lives here in Tacoma Park. She turned me on to the idea of buying more in bulk and using a bag for my bread instead of and, and storing it in the freezer. Um, and then she reminded me of Bea Johnson. I had seen this video about Bea Johnson and then it's like, oh yeah, the zero waste lady. Um, Brooke is a decluttering consultant. And, um, and here's the thing, let's admit, the more stuff we have, um, the more potential clutter we have. And then one day we or somebody else has to get rid of all of that stuff. And where's it gonna go? Like, is it gonna end up in the landfill? Does it all get to be recycled? You know, think about that as you bring things into your home. Where, what is the ultimate end for this? Where is this gonna go when it is no longer needed? And that's why I always try to focus on buying things that I know, you know, are going to break down in a landfill or that can be turned into something else. Um, okay, so because that six tips to avoid plastic bags had a lot to do with the kitchen, um, let's talk about kitchen and recycling. Um, so first of all, in addition to the compost bin in our kitchen, we also have a trash can and a recycling bin. And in every room in our home, we have a trash can and a recycling bin. So this is in, you know, in the bedrooms. So one's marked recycling, one's marked trash. And so our boys do a good job, for the most part, um, of recycling and putting, you know, putting those things in the right containers. But they'll usually ask me, um, Lori, what goes where? Um, so the other thing I want to point out is notice the trash can does not have a liner. You don't need a liner. And you might say, sticky stuff, gooey, gross, blah, blah. OK, it is like so rare that something gooey and gross ends up in you know, every little trash can in our house. Um, what you know, I tell the boys if they have something gross and disgusting, like just put it in the kitchen trash bag. That is our, that is our one trash can with a liner. And so I say, put that in there. Um, and then everything else, if it does get gross, um, you know, they'll dispose of gum or something like that in there. You just wipe it out. You just wipe it out. It takes, it's like takes a whole five seconds. Okay, so you really don't need those liners at all. And again, once you eliminate plastic bags from your life, um, you're not gonna have any to put in your little waste bins. So you, don't, you just don't need them, you just don't need them. Um, so buying in bulk um, is a really great way to reduce less waste. I know a lot of people, when they think of buying in bulk, it's like you go to, um, you know, Costco and buy the big huge container of something, but that usually comes in a big plastic container. Um, what I'm talking about buying in bulk is going to the food co-op here in Tacoma Park or Mom's Organic Market or Roots or um, Glut or, you know, places like that that sell bulk foods. And then instead of using a plastic bag or a paper bag that they provide, you bring your own container, okay? And some other examples of um, items that we buy in bulk at in Tacoma Park, um, like all of our nuts, I just bring a container for that, chocolate chips, 
coffee and tea I can get in bulk, flaxseed, all my baking needs like flour and you know all types of flour and sugar, lentils, nutritional yeast, oils, believe it or not. I will take like an old bottle of olive oil and then I just um, put a piece of tape over the UPC code and then you know I take it to them but you know when I first get in there and I have them weigh it and um, so we have the weight written down on it and then the tear or that's the, what the weight is and then the the code that it is for that item and uh, and then you know check it out just you know buy it in bulk um, it's really easy they also you can get in bulk olive oil canola oil apple cider vinegar soy sauce and um, also herbs and spices, all of ours, we try to buy those in bulk now. Now they do have little plastic bags that you can put those in, but again, I avoid the plastic bag. So I just reuse spice jars or any other little tiny jar to put those in. Popcorn, raisins, all these things, bagels, even tofu you can buy in bulk at our food co-op. And I just bring a big glass dish. And again, I get it weighed in advance because they deduct that off at the end. Um, so basically, when it comes to living low waste, it's all about reusables and not disposables. So I mean, think about it, 100 years ago, we didn't have all these disposables. I actually did a blog post on this. What would we have done 100 years ago? We did not have all these plastic cups and plastic cutlery and even just the paper stuff. We had dispose, I mean, we had reusables and they worked perfectly fine. So why, why can't we still use those? Um, they're, they're perfectly good. Um, here's a favorite cartoon of mine. If you can't read it, not to lecture, but the skull of your fallen enemy is reusable and much less wasteful. Yeah, so just think about that. Um, other reusables that you can use that you may not think of, um, first of all, um, milk. Instead of just buying the cartons of milk, we get the glass bottles and then we pay a deposit for it and then when we, you know, return, you know, whenever we return it, we, we get that discount back. Um, if you are a beer drinker, a lot of beer places around here do um, their beer in growlers. Franklin's in Hyattsville, Denizen's in Silver Spring, suddenly I'm craving a beer. Okay, um, Boochleggers is a friend of mine who sells kombucha. The co-op used to sell kombucha in bulk. Um, they had a tap for it, and then sadly that had to stop. The, I don't know why, but they couldn't do it anymore. And so I just couldn't stand the thought of buying like 20 little bottles of kombucha every week. So I have a friend up in Catonsville who sells kombucha in these big growlers. And whenever I'm in Baltimore, I call him up and I'm like, I'm coming by and I'm getting my booch. So that's how we work that out. Um, and eggs, whenever we buy eggs, um, I'm vegan, but we have a vegetarian and an omnivore, and then John calls himself a scavengivore, which means that he basically eats the leftovers that nobody else eats. So if there is meat left behind, he will be eating meat at that moment. Um, but, um, but for the egg eaters in our family, um, whenever we finish a carton, I don't throw it away. I don't recycle it. I take it to the farmer's market because there are a lot of people, egg vendors, at the farmer's market, and I just give them my egg cartons back so that they can reuse. Another thing I reuse is um, if, at the Silver Spring Farmer's Market as well as Tacoma Park, the Sutler Post Farm, the people that sell the flowers, um, you know, they wrap their flowers in um, rubber bands. And so I started noticing I was getting this big collection of rubber bands. I give them back my rubber bands and they are really grateful for that. Um, now, when it comes to storing produce, um, you know, we're so used to having the plastic bag for that. So things like um, lettuce and kale and that kind of thing, I wrap them in a damp tea towel. So I just dampen them up and then I like fold it up like a little baby, okay? And just, you know, flip that top over and put that in the fridge and it keeps it fresh. The key is keeping that towel damp, okay? I, you know, if you don't keep it damp, it will start to dry out. So, you know, if, if you're slow about eating greens, which we tend to be in our family sometimes, you, you know, if it starts to dry out, just 
re-dampen it and it'll stay fresh. Um, another thing that you can do is um, put it in a Pyrex container or bees wrap, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, broccoli, I put that in a damp towel. Brussels sprouts, I'll put that in a Pyrex container or just cover it with a damp cloth or put it in bees wrap. Mushrooms, I put those in a paper bag and then when I'm done, I compost the paper bag. Um, I also prepare a lot of food from scratch. Now, like for example, instead of getting the plastic container of guacamole, I make guacamole now. And people like my guacamole, don't they, John? Yes, I get lots of compliments on my guacamole. Um, you know, or bread, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Rini, you owe me your hummus recipe, remember? So I'm, I want to start making hummus because my first try at making hummus was not good, but I'm determined because we eat a lot of hummus in our house and I really want to avoid the plastic. Um, now, when it comes to leftovers, we got rid of, you know, we don't have any Tupperware or anything like that anymore. So we use glass containers and I was lucky um, you know, my parents moved out of their house about seven years ago and into assisted living, and so I got all of their Pyrex containers. Uh, I grabbed those up, had to fight my sisters over that. And, um, but also, you don't have to buy new stuff. You can just use old spaghetti sauce draw jars and things like that, and that is really what we use for leftovers. Like, I will put a half of a tomato in a jar or you know a half-eaten you know pepper or cucumber or something like that leftover pasta you know we just put it all in a, a jar that cost us only the cost of that food item um, and we reuse it over and over again but we also use a lot of pyrex so yes that is the inside of our fridge and on a good day yes um, okay so other things that you can use, bees wrap. Who's heard of bees wrap? Raise your hand. Okay, I love this stuff. So um, if you're a diehard vegan, this may not be an option for you because this is made with bees wax. Um, but basically this is the eco-friendly version of um, plastic wrap. Okay, and the great thing about it is when you put it around like a bowl or something like that, you just press it against the bowl and then the, the warmth of your hands mold it to the bowl. Or you can just wrap any type of leftovers in it. I put bread in it. Um, it, it works great. And here's the key. You can use it over and over and over again. You just wipe it off with like cold or lukewarm water. Okay, you can use a little soap hang it to dry. I have used bees wrap over and over again. My first batch I had for a year, okay, a year. And then once it just wasn't lost its stick, I then just chopped it up and put it in the compost bin, okay? Zero waste, love it. Okay, um, there's also um, lunch bots. These are stainless steel lunch, lunch containers. So um, Brian, our 13 year old, hates the food at Montgomery County Public Schools. And so he packs his own lunch. And so we often use lunch bots to put that in. We also bring these um, if we're going out and we're pretty sure we're gonna have leftovers. So instead of taking their takeout container, we bring our own takeout container. Yes, sometimes we forget, but that is something that we do strive to do. And then lunch skins, if you've heard of lunch skins, these are reusable lunch bags, okay? from a company right here locally in uh, Bethesda. So these are reusable. You can just put your sandwiches in here and seal it back up. Brian uses these in his lunch and, and then you can just stick them in the dishwasher or wipe them clean and they work great. So you don't need plastic bags. Now, um, cleaning up. Okay, we no longer buy paper napkins. We use cloth napkins. Um, and what we do is they can be as simple as taking an old t-shirt and tearing them up and turning them into napkins. I don't even like sew the borders. I just take that you know, chunk of t-shirt, okay? Works fine in our house of three men. Um, and, um, but then also we have ones that my sister is a Sally sewer and so she took some old shirts of my dad's and then, you know, put little borders on them and made them look really nice. Um, she got a 
kick out of that. So great, we use some of those. And then there are some really nice ones that we've bought or that I've picked up at a yard sale or an estate sale or something like that. So we have plenty of cloth napkins. Um, and I'll also bring those with me when I'm on the go. Um, for cleaning up messes, dragon towels, if you've ever heard of these, they are made of bamboo. Um, and bamboo is so much better than um, something made of trees because you know you chop down bamboo, like it grows like eight inches in a day. Like it grows back really quickly. So bamboo is a much better option. And the bamboo towels, you can wash them over and over again and they actually get softer. So that's a great option. Um, we don't use paper towels in my home. We don't buy paper towels anymore. So um, we use something called rags. Have you heard of rags? Okay. So, um, and they work just fine. And we do have lots of rags, um, you know, like a, a, just a regular towel that, you know, you no longer want to use for bathing and, you know, just turn that into a bag. Or again, the old t-shirts and that kind of thing. And obviously different material types work on different spills. Now, um, this is where we keep our rags underneath the kitchen sink. And then you'll notice the cardboard. So um, our cats, Loki and Thor, um, Thor has a habit, and just this morning, um, rushes to eat his breakfast and then promptly throws it up. Okay, so instead of using, you know, eight paper towels to clean up that mess, I take two pieces of cardboard that I get from, you know, whether it's a cereal box or, you know, any cardboard that comes into our home, snack box, and I scrape with one piece of cardboard onto the other piece of cardboard and get that mess up. And then I take my cleaning solution, which I'll talk about in a minute, spray that on the spot, and then use a rag to clean up the residue. Works like a charm, okay? No paper towels used. So that's how we do it in our house. Um, and if anybody ever comes to our house, when we go away, I often have people who stay at our house, and um, I will tell them, we have no paper towels. This is how you clean up a mess. So, um, so cleaning solutions. Um, we make our own cleaning solutions, and um, I'll include a link in the resource guide with you know everything I do. But like the main one is a multi-purpose cleaner. It's water and vinegar, and if you want to throw in a little bit of lemon, that works fine too. Now, um, I will admit, right now I have some plastic containers, okay, that I put my spray bottles that I use with my sp spray bottles, but. Um, I am getting glass bottles, so I am switching over to glass. But here's the thing, you don't need to, um, you know, invest in a lot of spray bottles, just, you know, use existing spray bottles and then put your own solution in that. So when you use up your multi-purpose cleaner that you have at your house now, then just switch over and do, it's truly, you know, half of it is water and half of it is vinegar. And I buy it in large quantities at, you know, Ace Hardware. Um, here's the thing, and then I use that plastic container over and over and over and over again versus buying a new container every time I run out of something. So it's not perfect, it's what I call less bad, okay? Um, I'm, st I'm always constantly looking for lower waste things to do when I'm cleaning things. Um, when it comes to the bathroom, um, I'm really trying to avoid facial tissues, using facial tissues. I use um, handkerchiefs and um, get those at Polly Sue's Vintage Clothing Store or Value Village or something like that, or again, an estate sale. Um, Virtue Brush is a bamboo toothbrush that um, I'm a big fan of. Even their packaging is eco-friendly. Um, they're plastic toothbrushes. Yeah, more plastic, okay? So um, I used to buy Preserve um, wear toothbrushes that you can buy at the food co-op and Whole Foods and other um, earth-friendly stores like that. Um, and then you can send those into TerraCycle. But I thought, you know, heck, if that's one less thing I have to send into TerraCycle to be recycled, the better. So I buy Virtue Brush. They do have bamboo toothbrushes at the food co-op, and I'm sure they have them at Whole Foods. So that's one way I avoid plastic. And then what I do with these is we'll use them for kindling if we have, I pop off the top, so that goes in trash. And then the rest I use for kindling if we ever do, for doing s'mores, you know, at the, in our backyard or something like that. Um, dental floss. 
so when I pick up stuff around the neighborhood, you want to know what I see a lot of? Those little pitchfork type plastic things that people use on your teeth, and my apologies if anybody here uses them. I see them everywhere. I don't know what it is, but I see them everywhere. So dental floss um, is something that um, you can actually avoid the plastic container with dental floss, and they sell these at the co-op, and I'm pretty sure they sell them at Whole Foods. Um, it is this, this container here is completely cardboard. There is a tiny little piece of metal there, um, and that is it. That's the only thing that goes to landfill, and then it actually does come in a little plastic casing, but the rest of it can just be recycled. So that's why I use that dental floss, and it, and it works perfectly. And then I buy soap in bulk at the food co-op. Um, it, technically, it's not in the bulk aisle. They do sell them individually. But what I do is I get it without the wrapper. I buy the kind without a wrapper, and I just bring a bag like I have there and just load up, and that is how I get soap. And um, speaking of soap, um, when we did our laundry, um, we used to buy the big seventh generation container. I thought, love seventh generation. They're a very earth-friendly company. Um, but it was still in a plastic bottle, and that drove me crazy. And then my neighbor, Rachel, um, Rachel Hardwick, president of the Food Co-op um, board, she told me about soap nuts. Um, and basically, soap nuts, they're hyperallergenic, they're fragrance-free, they're actually um, a berry known for its ability to clean and wash. Okay, and so basically you take the soap nuts, you take about like, they come in a bag like that, and then you take about seven or eight of them, and then you put them in a small bag like this, tie up the bag, throw it in your laundry. And then you can use it over and over again, up to about like five to seven loads, okay? Um, it's great. And then you can compost the soap nuts afterwards, okay? And then that little cloth bag is going to break down too. Now, I've never, I don't put the cloth bag in compost. I put that in the landfill, but that, that will break down. So that is what I use for doing laundry. And um, I also make a stain remover. And basically, this is um, vinegar, and I use Castile soap and water. Um, and it's basically warm water is what you start out with. And I, let's say we've got um, a baseball player in our family, and um, I have seen many a baseball pants, just nothing but dirt. And um, when he's done playing, I will make the solution. And especially when it's warm, I get out those stains. I don't need to shout it out. I use this and it's so much better for my health and just the health of the environment and um, I can make so much with these containers, okay? I can make lots and lots and lots of, um, you know, I can probably make eight, uh, you know, regular containers of stain remover. Um, and then when it comes to the dryer, um, we don't use anything. We don't put any bounce or anything like that in it. We don't need it. Um, I know some people use dryer balls. Um, so those are, those are great options. And then finally, um, I'd been begging my husband for a clothesline. And so I was so excited to get a clothesline. Um, I know my mother is rolling over in her grave like you wanted a clothesline. <laughs> um, but I have fond memories of when she would line dry the sheets and things like that. And so, um, and now when we do that, right John? Laundry smells fresh, fresh as a daisy. It's really wonderful. And the other thing I notice is when I'm hanging up t-shirts and things like that, no wrinkles, less wrinkles. And then when I take them down, I'm actually kind of folding them right then and there. So it actually does save, you know, it doesn't take any extra time. Um, and, and I just love it. Um, the one thing we don't put on the clothesline is um, towels, because they do get a little crunchy. Um, so dry cleaning, I want to tell you, you saw in the video the green garmento. Um, I'm going to step away here for a second at the end. Okay. I just really want to stress this because I'm a big fan of the green garmento. Okay, so basically, this is a laundry bag, and we use this in our home. So you put your dry cleaning in here, okay, as you're collecting it. Okay, and we, we probably have dry cleaned, what, three times a year, maybe four times? I don't know, not a lot. Okay, and then you cinch this up. Oh, sure, okay. Are they going to, will this get on the, yeah, it will get on the video? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Thanks, Mary. Okay, so you put your dry cleaning in here, you cinch it up, and it becomes a duffel. 
that you take with you. And then when you give it to the friendly guys at Carriage House Cleaners or wherever else you go, we take it to Carriage House, um, they put the tag here, okay? And then when they give it back to you, it's hanging up in this. No plastic bag underneath this, just this, okay? And we you just use that over and over again. So I love these, and this is one of the door prizes. So no plastic, way plastic-free dry cleaning. Um, okay, pets. So Loki and Thor, the cats, we've got litter boxes. You know, how do you deal with the cat litter? So what I do is less bad. Um, any food bag that we have, like potato chips or, you know, um, if we have coffee that, that we somehow comes in the house that's in a bag or, you know, any food bag that comes into the house, we collect it in this bag down by where the litter boxes are in our basement. And then when it comes to scooping poop, which we have to do twice a day, I put the poop in that and then I take that bag and put it out on our side porch and store it outside, okay, in a sealed container. And then on trash day, I put those um, bags into our one trash bag that collects all the trash in the house. Is that clear? If not, you can watch the video, um, How to Dispose of Kitty Cat Poop Without Using Plastic Bags, um, 2,000 views on my YouTube channel. Okay, but um, it works really well. I mean, ideally, Mary, weren't you telling me you don't even use the bags, you just put it all right, you probably like already put it in like the, the, the yellow thing. I'm striving for that, I'm striving for that. Um, but that, and that yellow container doesn't get smelly or, or anything, so okay, I'm gonna start doing that today. Today, I'm gonna do that, okay. Stainless steel container. Oh. Stainless steel bucket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that, I don't even know how that plastic container came into, I don't. Somehow it appeared at my house one day, so anyway. Okay, entertaining, we've got Thanksgiving coming up, and so um, we use something called dishware and silverware when we have parties, and um, so hey, yeah, let's use that again. If this were 100 years ago, that's what, Downton Abbey, okay? <laughs> Christmas episode, you know, they use dishware and silverware. Um, and then, of course, glassware, you know, wine tastes better in glass than in plastic. And then, um, and then pitchers of water, pitchers, <laughs> wow. Okay, um, so a uh, quick story. So Gina Mathias, who's the city's sustainability manager, a um, couple years ago, John and I had the pleasure of being invited to our house. It was like a summertime cookout or something like that. And then we get there and we realize it's a wedding reception. Uh, they had gotten married, um, you know, that day and it was a surprise for everyone who showed up at the party. So, but anyway, you know, when you show up, when you go to a party at the city, the sustainability manager for the city of Tacoma Park, you're thinking, this is probably going to be pretty low waste, okay? So what did Gina do at her wedding reception at her house? Well, she used, for dishes, she used Corel Ware. And I know some of us older folks know Corel Ware, so it's basically this non-breakable type of dish. And, um, and then she had, you know, silverware and, um, and then just glasses. Um, and I think she did some glass, and then I think she did have some plastic-ish glasses but like a non-breakable kind. Um, and then also, I know some folks will have bins that you can then dump, sudsy bins that you can like dump your dirty dishes in and your dirty cutlery and that kind of thing. Um, but you know, that's what she did and she had cloth napkins and she probably had about like, I don't know, 80 to 100 people at this party. So, you know, something to think about when you're entertaining at your home. Um, another thing, if you're having a large crowd, um, use maybe rent. That is an option. I mean, I am a recovering event producer, and so obviously when we would have big events, you know, we would, we would rent, you know, plates and glassware and all types of things like that. Um, or use compostable disposables, and what I mean by that is your plates, cuts, and cutlery that are made of plants as opposed to something that is plastic. Um, centerpieces, just use something from nature, okay? Um, we don't have a holly tree, but I do ask my neighbors who do have a holly tree if I can snip some holly off for my arrangements. And then, you know, I just take what's left of the Christmas tree that we chop off and I, um, you know, put that in a decoration. We've got um, an overgrown rosemary bush. I put that around the house and it smells great. So you can just 
you know, make centerpieces out of things from nature. Um, when my neighborhood has a gathering, we are famous for our um, neighborhood Fourth of July block party. And what we have started to train our neighbors to do is to bring reusables to the block party instead of disposables. We will not pay and spend, you know, valuable neighborhood money, okay, and um, put it towards disposables. So we tell everybody, bring your own travel mug or reusable water bottle and bring your own um, plates and cutlery as well and then just take it back with you when you're done. Okay, I remember in the 70s when my church would have a big church picnic, that's what we did. You brought enough of a place setting for your entire family, and so that's what we've started to do. And then for table coverings, we use linens, table linens. And again, those things you can you know buy at Value Village or a estate sale and then also we um, or we'll use craft paper to cover it with and the great thing about craft paper you know the brown paper it's on a big roll it's really inexpensive and then you can write on it and you can say desserts and that's where they put the desserts and side dishes and that's where they put side dishes it works great for buffets so that's what we do in Long Branch Sligo neighborhood now um, when I'm on the go this is what I carry with me reusable straws um, just to climb the straw. Most of us don't need a straw in the first place. And then um, if we do, bring your own, okay? Um, there's stainless steel straws and there's also straws that are glass-ish um, and they're like Pyrex. I've dropped them on the floor and they have not broken. So that is definitely an option. Um, to go wear is the reusable bamboo cutlery that I talked about in the video. Um, and I do carry one of those in my purse at all times. And um, I, Rene and I were talking about how I got caught in a snowstorm on my way back from um, New York to Pennsylvania on Thursday, and so I got some takeout food. And I said, here's my, here's my bag. I don't need your bag, and I don't need your cutlery. I had my to-go wear with me. So that's how I avoided the plastic. Um, we are big Washington Nationals baseball fans. You can bring in your reusable water bottle into a Nats game. It just has to be empty, but that is what we do. And, um, and then also, um, so my, my water bottle is a swell, and then um, the swell tumbler, um, this keeps things really hot and really cold. So um, I have had tea that I put in at eight o'clock in the morning, and at four o'clock in the afternoon, it was still very warm. Don't ask me why it takes eight hours for me to sip my tea, but um, yeah, it just, it keeps it really, really warm. And then another thing, one time I put ice in it and the ice wouldn't melt because it insulates so well. So, um, and then again, as I mentioned, um, things that I bring with me on the go, I, use, I bring cloth napkins with me, just, you know, one if I'm gonna be eating in my car, eating on the go. And then of course the lunch bots, which we talked about earlier. Um, and my water bottle, I bring it everywhere. I bring it to church. I bring it to the airport, okay? I take it through security. You just don't fill it up. You fill it up on the other side of security. It works fine. And I also bring it with me when I go out to eat because you know when they keep filling up your, water your glass of water over and over again? And I hate leaving a restaurant with a full glass of water. Um, and after I've had eight of those, I'm like, okay, I need to stop. So what I'll do is I'll take my extra water and put it in my reusable water bottle. Um, when it comes to gift giving, we're getting into the gift giving season. Um, we are big in our family on experiences, and so I am not, no artist. I'm sure many of you could do a much better job than me, but um, this is a sample of a gift certificate that I make to give to people in my family, and we give experiences. So, you know, whether it's going to a show or a restaurant or, you know, something like that. Um, my mother-in-law, um, we actually went to the opera, you know, a month or so ago. Okay, that's kind of fancy, but I mean, it can be simple stuff too. Um, I've taken people on hikes and that kind of thing. It can be really inexpensive. The gift of time is what most of us want anyway. So, and uh, I'll be honest with you, you're gonna remember an experience way longer than you're gonna remember a thing. Um, but one of the things that I do is I include a, um, expiration date on it so that they cash it in, okay? And so some people call me up right away, let's get that scheduled! So it, it works out great. Um, but if you do have 
um, something, an actual thing that you want to give, um, wrap it in something that can be reused again. So um, here are some bottles of wine that I wrapped in scarves that I bought at Value Village um, one Christmas Eve at like four o'clock in the afternoon and they were about 80% off, okay? So that is an option. And um, when Video Americaine, the old video place that used to be in downtown Tacoma Park, they were giving, a, when they were going out of business, they had movie posters. And so we took those and we used those as wrapping paper. And that ribbon there is ribbon that has been reused over and over again. And, um, and then, you know, just lots of times there will just be bags, fabric bags that you can get and buy and reuse over and over again. And I actually like to tie off gifts with, that, that is real holly there, or like just a piece of rosemary or something from nature, um, so that it's something that's going to break down or can be reused over and over again. Okay, so final video here. Um, a couple years ago, my family and I decided to go take spring break in Mexico. And I said to John, um, I want to go to an eco-friendly resort. I can't just go to, you know, just any place. You know, I need to be on the beach and it needs to be eco-friendly. And um, a friend of ours, Abby Rome, who I met through Silver Sp what was then Silver Spring Green, she is a eco-travel consultant. Um, and so she found this place in Mahahual, Mexico, which is about six hours south of Cancun. And just before we went, um, I read about the trash problem in Mahahual. And I said, while I'm there, I'm going to pick up trash. So um, just imagine if this were your neighborhood. So this is called Lori's Trashy Behavior, the Mexico edition. So I would say that 98% of what I picked up was plastic and <sighs> the day we invented plastic is the day the earth cried. Yep, it's time to start getting up. You got a key? So when we finally decided to spend spring break in Mexico, I asked my friend Abby, who's an ecotourism specialist, to help us find an eco resort. And boy, did she nail it. She told us about the Maya Luna Hotel restaurant, which is a small eco resort with four little bungalows on the beach. That's it. It's about five hours south of Cancun, past Tulum, and then south of a small coastal town called Mahahual. Now, some of you may know it by the cruise ship destination Costa Maya, and that's just north of town. Maya Luna is off the grid, so they have solar panels on their roof, and each bungalow collects rainwater, which is what you use in the bathroom. After making our reservation though, I found out that this part of the Mexican Caribbean has a problem with thousands of tons of trash, mostly plastic, that floats on the Caribbean current and then ends up on the beaches of the southern Yucatan Peninsula. As soon as I learned that, I knew I wanted to spend some of my vacation picking up trash, because that's how we roll. In front of our hotel, it's absolutely beautiful, but if you go to either side of the property, there is lots of trash because of the trade winds and the currents. Anything that floats, particularly plastic, is going to end up on the shores here. Some of it does come from Mahawal, the people that live there and what they create, um, but also comes from cruise ships, the Caribbean, 
and parts of North America. So it's it's everybody's problem. So I want to do my part, and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm thinking I'm just going to start with the big stuff because there are so many minuscule pieces of plastic that are just embedded in the grass here. And I mean, I, I could just spend all day coming through that. And what happens is the plastic washes up onto shore and then it sits in the sun and then it just gets dry and brittle and it just breaks apart into many, many, many pieces. And that makes me sad. polystyrene takeout container. This breaks apart, gets into the fish, the fish eat it. Seven two seven two seven kilograms. kilograms. Seventy two kilograms. Just rounding, right? Seventy two yes. kilograms. The day we invented plastic is the day the earth cried. Yeah. There's just so much plastic out there. After picking up trash in Mexico, I'm even more committed to eliminating plastic from our lives. If you want to find out what we are already doing, watch the three short videos below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching, and remember, take care of yourself and take care of the planet. guide. So um, I want to talk to you about adopt a spot which Rick already highlighted. Um, you know it really is a great way to do something great for the community and it is a really great workout. I'm telling you I get my heart rate up when I walk around and do that um, and then you get a sign and some publicity whether you're a business or not. If you're just a person who wants to pick up trash you can get your name on that sign. Um, so you know so do that, and you can pick a spot anywhere. Plenty of spots available, right, Rick? You pick your own spot, okay? So it, it works great. The city gives you gloves and a vest and trash bags, but you know, after a while I just started using my own trash bags, and then I just dump it with my own trash. Um, but um, it's, just, it's just a great way to do it. You know, I pick up on Carroll Avenue between 
the Carroll Avenue Bridge and um, the um, Long Branch Bridge. And I do both sides, and it probably takes me about an hour, hour and 15 minutes to do it. And um, it's really rewarding. Um, so that's one of your action items, is adopt a spot. So if you live here in a Tacoma Park, sign up for the adopt a spot program. I do have a link for how you can sign that up. Did you bring the pr paper things? They're out on the desk. Okay, great. Or you can do the paper version. Um, the other thing is when you go home today, look at what is in your trash and your recycling bin and say, hmm, what can I consume less of? Or how could I do this differently? Um, and then number three, Rini, this is your cue. Um, you can attend a meeting of the Zero Waste Support Group. Um, this is Rini Saha, and she um, attended this workshop in May. And as a result, one of the things that started that going is you decided to start a Zero Waste Support Group. Yeah, um, I think um, there's a support group if you want to and alcohol addiction or you wanted to lose weight, there's Weight Watchers. Um, I think supporting each other is really important. Um, so that was where that idea was sort of born because I'm not zero waste. I'm, when I go into other people's houses, I realize how much less trash I create <laughs> compared yeah. to other people. Yeah. But I'm also not, I'm trying to be low waste. Um, but I'm, every time I come to this talk, I learn a little bit more. I have more ideas. Um, because I think it's always important to reduce and not recycle because so many things are not recyclable, particularly plastic. So, um, so that we, meet, we meet every Friday. We meet every Friday um, at Soup Girl around 10 o'clock. Um, probably not this Friday because the holiday, but start next Friday. Um, every week, we usually focus on one topic. Last topic was refuse. Um, the topic before was food. And we give each other ideas. We try to discuss things like, for instance, last week when we talked about refuse, is it okay to bring, because I go to all these kids' birthday parties and they always have these plastic wear, is it okay to bring your own um, in that situation? Um, so I kind of concluded it was okay for my three-year-old because she doesn't care, but my seven-year-old, he would probably get embarrassed. Um, so, you know, it's, you kind of have to like make those decisions. Yeah. And um, so. But um, so, I mean, it's a, there's really interesting conversations. I learned, for instance, you know, and I, reducing my plastic, I feel like I'm also protecting my child, my children's health, because plastic is made out of petrochemicals. And, you know, if you look up against plastic, you could taste those petrochemicals. Those are leaching into your food and everything else. And, um, and also making my own cleaners. I also feel like, you know, they put all these weird chemicals into those cleaners and no one knows what the full cost yeah. is of those. They don't have yeah. to test them. There's no law saying that they have to test them. Yeah. And even if they test one chemical, we don't know what that reaction is between the two chemicals together. So making, I mean, they're usually just a few ingredients anyway. So cutting down on the toxicity is a lot of my motivation yeah. to go zero waste. And um, so I have a sign up sheet outside so I could email you more details about the group. Um, there's a Facebook page, so if there's Which, any... And we have the link to that in okay. the resource guide that you will get today. Okay, cool. So that will give you, you know, updates about the group, what the topic will be, if it's going to, you know, if we have to delay it or something, so. All right, cool. So definitely check out the Zero Waste Support Group. It is, it is great. Um, and then the other thing I want to tell you about is, so when I spoke last May, I hinted that this was um, happening, and now I am proud to announce that we do have a group called the Last Plastic Straw Tacoma Park. And we um, are a movement of volunteers. Um, it was started by a group of Piney Branch Elementary School students. And then um, you know some ad adults got involved. I had reached out to the Committee on the Environment. And I said, hey, what are we doing about plastic straws? Have we thought about banning plastic straws in Tacoma Park? And uh, they said, well, you know, yeah, some people are interested. So we formed a committee. And um, we just launched our website um, a few days ago. And so here's our mission is we want to um, phase out plastic straws in Tacoma Park. I'm not saying ban, I'm saying phase out because there are some people who do need a plastic straw to drink. Sometimes if you have a certain disability, you, a paper straw is not gonna work for you and you need a plastic straw. So we want those available for people who require a plastic straw. But in general, most of us don't need a straw at all. But if you do want a straw, um, the restaurants can offer paper straws. 
And so we are there to support the restaurants in a transition and also to support people um, to um, learn more about plastic and what you can do when you're outside of Tacoma Park or elsewhere to avoid straws. Um, so I'll have a link to the last plastic straw at Tacoma Park in the resource guide. You can sign our petition which says we'd like to phase them out in Tacoma Park. You can sign up for our mailing list and then talk to restaurants and say, hey, first of all say, hold the straw please. Tell them you don't need the straw and then also say to them, um, hey, have you thought about switching over to paper? It's so much better for the environment. So there you go. Um, so check that out. And this is how you can get in touch with me. Um, I am on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. Um, so stay in touch with me or just respond to my email today if you have any questions about anything. The resource guide covers basically everything we talked about today. But if there's something I touched upon that you um, did not, I somehow left it out, just do not hesitate to email me and let me know what you need. Um, that is the conclusion of my presentation. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh yeah, hold on, we, hold it. we gotta get you on the mic. So make sure you talk into the mic. So that we can so okay. we can get you on the audio. Right, I'm not sure these are mic worthy questions. Oh, no. I, I, <laughs> I've been meaning to look this up for a while in the cleaners, but one of my favorite products is OxyClean. Yeah. Do you happen to know environmentally? Yeah, that not so good. no. Yeah, don't uh, use oxygen bleach. And um, yeah, I, yeah, with from the what I know about OxyClean, I'm concerned it's got too many chemicals. Right, um, it's oxygen bleach. I don't know what else is in it other than that. Um, the other thing is the concern about how uh, little, you know, dwindling percentage of things that actually can be recycled. Yes. Even if they are technically recyclable. Yes. But um, all those little bits of foil, like a Hershey Kiss foil, or um, little tiny products that have aluminum on them. Yep. Uh, do you have any idea if that stuff, or sometimes you could just ball it all together? Really yeah, great question better. on that. Um, so technically, Food, anything with food waste on it shouldn't be recycled. Um, if you can wipe off the food waste, like, you know, we try not to use a lot of foil in our house, but if we do, I, I, number one, I reuse it as much as I can. Like when we go to Chipotle, I will reuse that foil. Um, and, um, and then I, I wipe off all the food waste and reuse it over and over again. But, um, but then when I'm done with it, I recycle it, but I make sure the food waste is gone. So you really should be rinsing out. It doesn't have to be dishwasher clean, but you really should be rinsing it out. So yeah, foil like that, um, it's just probably got food and chocolate residue on it. So, um, you know, I would, you know, you're gonna have to make a game day call on that one. And yeah, when in doubt, throw it out actually. And finally, um, very quickly, I do very little dry cleaning, but organic versus non-organic dry cleaning. Well, definitely organic because it's l definitely less chemicals. And um, I know we've got a couple of organic cleaners right around here. Yeah. Mary. Um, I just very super quickly want to talk about the cat litter, but um, oh, yeah. I, I do have a question <laughs> that I don't oh. know the answer to. Um, I got at uh, like a Southern States store R&D Cross in Upper Marlboro, but Ace Hardware might have them too. It's a stainless steel bucket. It's, it's not very big, but it's big enough. I just put the cat litter, it sits next Clean to there. the cat litter yep. boxes in a five gallon plastic bucket so my cat won't get into it. And she doesn't like the smell anyway. And I just put the cat litter and poo Clean right in that. there. And then every two days or three days, I take the bucket out on the porch to my big plastic trash bag that collects all my trash for the week yeah. and I dump it in there. Yeah. And then yeah. just one no, that's plastic a great, yeah. bag going. Okay. Oh, and then my question, um, I was thinking about cat vomit. I don't use the cardboard. I, I just take two large spoons and scoop it up and I, I hope I'm not doing the wrong thing. I put it in the compost. Is that bad? Should I stop uh, doing yeah, that? Yeah, you probably, d yeah, the cats don't do may, that? yeah, with toxoplasma, something, something, oh, okay. something. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't do that. And the same yeah. with like dog, cat, and human hair. Don't put that in the compost? Um, no, they do say you can put pet hair. We do put our pet hair in the compost, um, but, um, but uh, uh, pet feces definitely do not put in the compost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the back. 
Hi there. I work at a school, and I have two young children. And there's a movement away from you know giving lots of cupcakes and that sort of thing. And it seems to be that the replacement is that we give them like little things of plastic crap, Ugh. you know, like little rings or things like that. And so, while I understand we don't want to be sugaring up our children all the time, part of me is like, well, at least the cupcakes eaten, you know, and then there's exactly. less trash. Whereas now the kids are just getting crap. Yeah. constantly and I don't really know what to do about that I mean I want to offer suggestions at my own school and where my kids are but like what I, I don't really know what to suggest that solves this problem yeah first of all definitely do that speak up this you know the squeaky wheel you know gets heard and um, I would so are you saying they so they yeah I know this is they don't want you to bring in yeah. handmade For stuff yeah you know, But, the, but you can bring in food, like you can bring in Dunkin' Donuts, right? Uh, there's at, at the school where I work, we're trying to move away from bringing in a lot of sugar. sugar. Fresh fruit. Yeah, fresh fruit. And something that needs to be like clementines, maybe. Um, you know, something that you can peel or that kind of thing. I'm trying to think of something that's not sugary that you could bring in. Gosh, pita and hummus does not sound exciting for a snack. Yeah, wow. They're just worried about them bouncing off the walls, huh? Because, I mean, I'm thinking, because... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, I hear you on the food allergies. Oh, no, and in our neighborhood, one of our neighbors does such a great job. She asks everybody, um, okay, for kids with food allergies and are gluten-free and that kind of thing, um, let me know if your house is not going to be giving out alter alternatives to candy. So some people give out things, like pencils and stuff like that, we give out chocolate, fair trade chocolate, as well as pretzels from Utz or Snyder's or one of those places. And it's shocking how many kids pick up the pretzels. Yeah. So um, we definitely offer healthier snacks. So that might be something, the ind individually wrapped pretzels and chips, since that's not eh, eh, it's still junk, though. I mean, the pretzels are a little bit better. but. Gosh, that's such a bummer. I mean, gosh, it makes you sad. But I, I get the food thing, and then they're worried about liability. I get that, too. OK, we had another Hi. question. Hi. Oh, hold, oh. hold it. Hold, get you on. Rini, hold, oh, sorry. Rini, can you take your oh. mic oh. over there? I'm sorry. Yeah. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry, and you had it. OK, we'll go here. Sorry. One thing I thought about with the schools, and this is just sort of reducing that event, is when we moved here, where our small children went to school, they had one birthday celebration a month in their classroom, and that was for Everybody's Everybody. Everybody. And it was, idea. I mean, it's not getting rid of the problem that you're talking about, but the, the sugar, I mean, that was it. And all the kids were happy with just having that one, especially the shy kids who don't want their mom coming in with a box of cupcakes or whatever. I have three of those. But um, it just reduced the number of birthday parties. I mean, I have twins, and between the two of them, because they would have a birthday party in their classroom, and then they'd have to bring each, they'd get stuff for their other sibling. They'd, I'd say, almost once a week at the schools here, bring having cupcakes and little plastic things. And then the other is, um, you know, perhaps thinking of the, getting these kids involved and finding something that they would like to have a set for plastic things, you know, like more time at recess or something like that. Or That's a great idea. Even using, um, you know, wood coins to get them something that they would add up to to get at school, something like that. I don't know. I just had one question, I'm sorry. Which sure, is no, 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 Mike, no. which is, it's, it's along this line because I find with so many um, social events, there's a lot of waste. And I just... I really, I hate to say this, but I always think of single, single servings suck. And that's one thing that we did not have 50 years ago so much of. Nope. And juice boxes, you know. No. So what I tend to do is I bring like a big juice, plastic, sorry, hopefully glass, you know, apple cider. Yeah. You know, 50 ounce or something. And then, you know, real glasses or mugs to serve it with. But I wonder if that really reduces the waste as much as this. It's less bad, as I like to say. So yeah, now here's, here's something. And by the way, thank, thanks for that. Thanks for bringing that up. Because the, one of the other things that I pick up a lot of, those darn straw wrappers that come with juice boxes. I pick those up all the time, especially by playgrounds. Um, so remember when I was talking about how we used to do things in the 70s? And you know, remember the big thermoses that we used to put water in? OK, use those, use those. 
So, and that's what we do at our neighborhood block party. We just get some of those and put water in it and lemonade, and then people bring their reusable water bottles and fill up there instead of having single serving plastic bottles. Yes, I see the time, John. So, um, yeah, and let's hold on. Let's get this question back here, and then I'll get you, ma'am, and then we'll, well, then we'll have to cut it off. Yes. Okay, good. Um, my question is about the, uh, the compost, uh, the food yes. scraps. And we live in Sil Silver Springs, so okay. we don't have a pickup. Is there a place, if we wanted to like collect that stuff and periodically take it somewhere, where would we take it? I, hmm? Mom has a oh, that's, okay, that's right. Thanks, thanks, Mary, I forgot about that. Sorry, what was that? And Whole Foods and Mom's Organic Market. Okay. There's one in College Park and there's also one in DC. They're basically equal distance. Okay. All the DC, um, all the DC farmers markets now uh, have compost. So you don't have to be a resident of Washington to bring compost? I don't think you do. Yeah. Great. At the farmers market? Okay. One other, one last, one last, what, what is kombucha? Kombucha, oh, it's fermented tea. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I know. No, I was afraid to drink it before, but I love it now, and I'm quite addicted to it, and it has nothing but healthy properties to it. Okay, and then... I was just going to ask if you could comment on, you know, we're heading into holiday season, yes. Amazon boxes, but more importantly, catalogs and how to get off catalog lists. Oh, yeah. There's a service I, I signed up for a couple of years ago, I think for $2.00. You put your name and address and Which stuff. Which one and was that I one? I don't remember what it is, yeah. but it pa really decreased paper karma. the amount of uh, paper catalogs karma. I got. Yeah, Paper Karma I signed up for, and it was great. Now I think it costs. It used to be free. It costs a little bit of something. It but it was great because all you have to do, this is fabulous, it's an app that you can put on your phone. And once you get registered for it, and that takes like a whole minute, and so they um, so they have your address, your name and your address in the system. You take a picture of the return address of the people sending you the mail and they'll get you off the list. Now sometimes there's a bit of a lag time um, and then sometimes I still get stuff so I keep taking that picture and I do eventually, I mean I've gotten off so many lists that way. So it's great. And th th there has been like one or two occasions where I I'm like, come on. They, it keeps getting sent to me, so I will just call up that business then. But that's one versus, you know, 15 or something like that. Okay, I'm not going to take it. If you have any other questions, you could just see me afterwards. But right now we're going to do exciting door prizes. So, Rick, I want you to pick four numbers between one and what, John? Well, they're, they're numbers. Oh, that's how you did it. Okay. Okay, great. So he's picking...